Hello everyone, I'm Arunima from Knit and Otter and in this video I'm going to show you how to join squares using the join as you go technique uh, with the flat braid join method. So um, this for this you need your squares. Uh, I have made these four squares already but you could you could do this uh, as you make your squares just for this video i've made these squares separately so i could uh, i could just join them together in this video and show you how to do it uh, I, you need one yarn for uh, whatever color you want for joining and you need a bunch of stitch markers and i'll show you why and there is this hook so this method can be used to join any kind of squares and i wanted to show you how to join squares of uneven edge edges so these are four different tunisian crochet stitches and if you're following my tunisian sampler blanket cal then you would know that there uh, we're doing 16 stitches uh, and there'll be 25 in the extended cal and uh, there'll be squares there are squares where each square is of a different uh, stitch count and row count so the edges edge stitches don't really match exactly so for that reason this join is very very useful you don't need your squares to have the exact same number of stitches and the on the edges so this one's a Tunisian simple stitch this one is an extended knit stitch this one is the Mori lace pattern and this one is a double crochet so all of these are Tunisian blocks but uh, you can you can use this method for regular square uh, regular crochet squares too it's a great method to join granny squares but in this video I'm going to focus on how to do this for squares that do not have the same number of edge stitches here let me show you how my sampler blanket join looks this is how it is and you can see it's hard to see with this color but there's a little it looks like a braid and these two blocks they're not they do not have the same number of stitches at the edges but uh, it doesn't matter for this join both these squares are the exact same size though so they're eight inches wide and eight inches in length so because they're squares they're eight, eight inch blocks and i've joined them with this flat braid where i didn't have to worry about how many stitches there were and i didn't have to even the stitches i didn't have to make any borders to make the number of stitches uh, the same to be able to do this here's a picture of the completed blanket and uh, if you're interested in that i have a cal that i'm hosting right now it's nearing the end but uh, you can find all the instructions on my blog for it and there will be a pattern a pdf pattern available in my Ravelry and Etsy, Etsy stores at the after the cal is complete. So let's get started. So to begin, I'm going to start with one square. So this is one square. This is the Mori lace pattern. And if you want to know how uh, each of these is made, uh, I am going to add a link in the description below. So I have tutorials for all of these. So this is the Mori lace pattern. And to prep this, I'm going to use some stitch markers. So there are two ways to prep this square. So if you see, this is approximately five inches by five inches. So what you can do is you can put a stitch marker at every inch. So there's one, two, three, four, and then two at the ends. So you can either do that or what I what I did with my squares was there's just folded it in half and I put a stitch marker at, at the center here and then I folded it in half from here and I put another stitch marker right at the center and uh, folded it here and a stitch marker here so that sort of divides it into five sections. So that's one, two, three, sorry, four sections. That's four equal sections. You could have as many number of these as you want. I like to just, this was easy for me. So I just divided the square on each side like that. I just fold it in half and put stitch markers so that I have approximately equal number of uh, equal spaces in between these stitch markers. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact for this.
So you need a bunch of stitch markers to do this. Uh, that's why I have a big box and uh, so I'm never short of these but you can use uh, safety pins or whatever you like to use as stitch markers doesn't really have to be these and that's how it looks right now so there are these corners and then these each edge is divided approximately into approximately four equal spaces or four equal lengths so it's half and then so it's a quarter 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 so with my eight inch square I did this and then I divided this part into half as well for the eight inch square it might be easier to just take a tape measure and uh, find equal spaces and just put put these stitch markers so for now instead of the instead of having it like one inch intervals with this method it comes out to be about an inch and a quarter and I'm okay with that you can do it with as many uh, whatever length you'd like this was easy this is how I joined my squares so my squares for the blanket are eight inch squares but this one's a five inch square this method would work for any size squares so let me just begin with this one so we start at it at a corner I'm going to pick this yarn and work with this so in the corner we start with a single crochet so that's one single crochet and then six chains one two three four five six I, I'm making a lo long chain here because I want to give some space in between my blocks this number can be adjusted but uh, for this tutorial I'm going to use six chains here and four in between each of these intervals so you'll see how it goes so after the six chain I'm going to make a single crochet in that very same space so that's that's just at the corner so that single crochet chain six single crochet and then I'm going to chain four one two three four and I'm going to single crochet here where it, I have my first stitch marker so I'm going to remove the stitch marker and I'm going to single crochet here and then I'm going to chain four one two three four and to remove this and I'm going to single crochet right where that was so I just I find I pick up these two loops uh, these two bars of that edge uh, you can pick up whatever you like I, I that's what I like about this join method you don't there are very few rules it's uh, you can make this join wherever you'd like and I've seen it work just fine with any kind because it's very lacy it doesn't matter if you just pick up the entire thing from here this entire section or if you just uh, go through these two bars I usually go through these two bars but you can you can make them here as well that should be fine so one two three four and then move the stitch marker and make a single crochet here so that's how it's looking so far and then one two three four I apologize for the noise these stitch markers are hitting the table but um, I'll be removing them as I go so find that corner and make a single crochet and then chain six because there's a corner one two three four five six 
and then single crochet in the very same space so the corner always has this single crochet chain six single crochet and then chain four one two three four and remove the stitch marker and single crochet here So this is just an approximation you don't really have to have the exact same number of stitches in between these two one two three four one two three four Then one, two, three, four. Find the corner. Single crochet. And then chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And single crochet. one two three four so you might see that i'm not even probably crocheting in the same space where that stitch marker was because it really does not matter it as long as you have it about the same distance the space is exact about the same as this one so one two three four One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now we are at a corner again. Single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Single crochet. And then this is the last edge. One, two, three, four. And move this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we are at the beginning at this point. So this is where my single crochet is. And I'm going to join with a slip stitch. So that's how this is looking right now got this chain sort of border and there are these long uh, chains on the corners but that's how the square looks right now and at this point you can cut the yarn and weave in these ends this is how it looks after completing the braid outside of this one square I'm going to attach another square right next to it so this is my double crochet square and I wanted to show you uh, how it will work with stitches that have uh, with squares that have different number of edge stitches so because this is a double crochet the edge number of edge stitches here and the number of edge stitches here is different so you can see that it won't matter because when I make this braid on this side I'll just join the two braids and it doesn't matter what number of stitches there are on both sides I'm going to take my yarn I'm going to attach it with the same color so I'm going to take this and I'm going to attach it to a corner and the another thing I wanted to tell you was um, with this joining technique I've seen that 
if you see any curling with any stitches in your Tunisian crochet blocks then it doesn't really matter much it evens out after the join so if you have not uh, blocked your squares this should still work out because after you join this should even out uh, but I recommend blocking them before to get them to sit um, to be a certain size uh, so they are matching in size it, it has to be the same edge size it could be different number of stitches but the size should be the same so I'm going to go ahead and attach this so to attach this I'm going to have to go around here 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 and then this is the side that will be attached because it's join as you go this is my first square and my second square I'm going to make the braid here and then as I made my braid on this side I'm going to attach it with this I'm going to prep this square as well this time I'm not going to close these stitch markers I'm just going to leave them Okay, so it's prepped right now so I'm going to start I'm going to start at this corner I'm going to go and make the braid here here and then and this edge I'm going to join it and then I'm going to complete it on this side so I'm going to start here find that corner and join the yarn and then single crochet and chain six one two three four five six and single crochet here and chain four one two three four and then remove the stitch marker and single crochet here and then chain four one two three four remove the stitch marker single crochet I'm going to do it I'm going to do this all the way till this corner and then I'll meet you on the other side so here I am at uh, I've completed this one edge and I'm almost done with the second one here now I'm going to make a chain four and this is the time when we'll join with this corner stitch so one two three four and then I make a single crochet in that corner and then I chain so at this point it's a little hard for me to work so I'm going to turn my work here like this so it's slightly easier to join these and then because it was chain six I'm just going to I'm going to do half so that's chain three one two three and I'm going to insert my hook here in this chain the corner chain on that other square pull this and then chain three one two three so that's a total of chain six 
and I'm going to make a single crochet in that corner again so that joins the corner and I'm going to now chain so instead of chain four I'm going to do chain two and then I'm going to remove my hook I'm going to insert this hook here and pick up this loop and chain two and make a single crochet here at this first stitch marker I'm going to do it one more time and show you so that's chain two and now we pick up the second chain space on this side insert our hook pick up this loop pull it through and then chain two and then remove the stitch marker from here and make a single crochet right here so there's another way to do this without having to remove your stitch mark uh, to remove your hook from the loop so I'm going to show you that as well I don't like that as much but it's easier and uh, faster to do so that's one two chain just the same and then don't remove this insert your hook into that chain space the third chain space here so we've gone through one two and we are at the third one so insert your hook there yarn over pull through that's like a it's almost like a join a slip to join and then chain two and remove the stitch marker and make a single crochet here so here this gives it a little more space to move like the, st the chains can move around if you see these chains can move and if there is a little difference be between the edge size this gives you a little mobility but this one doesn't move at all but I think it's it's nice enough so if you would like rather do this that's fine too but I made mine using this one where I removed the hook and then inserted it from the other side so I'm going to show you the rest of the tutorial that way so there's one two remove the hook pull this and then chain two and a single crochet here at the corner and because we're at the corner we're going to again join with this so chain three one two three and pick this corner chain space and then pull that loop and chain three that maintains the stitch count as chain six and single crochet here so that is how one edge looks after joining those are the corners and those are the edges so I'm going to go ahead and complete this edge like I did the rest and then join with this first single crochet in the corner that completes the join of these two squares and that's the flat braid and it's the, at this point you can cut the yarn and weave in ends so there. This is how it's looking after joining these two squares, and now I'm going to join two more. So this is going. So this was uh, the mori lace. This was the double crochet. This is the simple stitch, and this is my extended knit stitches. So I'm going to join these. So now for this one, I'm going to join this one first. So for this, I have to make my three edges without joining and then this last one will be the one where I'll join so I'm going to begin with prepping the square so that's how it's looking after I've prepped it <coughs> at this point I'm going to join at this corner and then single crochet and chain six one two 
three, four, five, six. Looks like I lost a stitch marker. It should go right here. And then single crochet in the same space here, the corner. And then chain four, one, two, three, four. Single crochet at this point, we're going to join here. So I'm going to do a chain three, one, two, three, and now to know where to insert. So there is insert your hook. So there is this chain space from this square, and there's this chain space from this square. So we'll go in the diagonally opposite one. So I'm going to go in this one, pull this yarn, pull this loop. And then chain three. One, two, and three. And single crochet in that corner. And now I'm going to chain two and pick up this first chain space and I'm sorry, insert my hook in that first chain space pull that loop, chain two, and single crochet in this space here. And then chain two, and find this next chain space, pull the loop, chain two, and single crochet here. And then chain two, find the next chain space, this one, and pull and chain two, and single crochet. So you'll see that for every chain space on this side, there is one on this side. So the four chain space, and there's one four chain space, and they're just interlocked, it forms a braid. So the last one here, there's one, two, and take that, pick up that, um, sorry, insert the hook here in that last chain four space here, and pull that loop, chain two, and single crochet in the corner. And chain three, find that corner chain space and then pull the loop here and then three chains, one, two, three, and single crochet in that same corner. So at this point, we've joined this edge and I'm going to complete the rest of the square. That's the last one and join with a single crochet. I'm sorry, join with a slip stitch with the single crochet stitch there. This point, just cut the yarn and leave an ends. This is how it's looking after joining these three squares. So you see that there's only one edge joined here, one edge joined here, and you can see this center forming nicely. And now I'm going to join this last square right here. So in this, there'll be two edges that need to that need joining, and these two will be the regular braid. So I'm going to prep my square first, and I'm going to start making my stitches from here. See, this is just an approximation, it doesn't have to be exact. So even if I lose a stitch marker, I put it right back where I think would be the halfway point between these two. So like I lost this one and I would just put it here, which I think is about halfway between these two. So I'm going to start at this point. So join, and then a single crochet right here. And chain six, one, two, three, four, 
five, six, and single crochet. And make the braid on this edge, one, two, three. And this corner, at this point, I'm going to join it with this corner here. So, we start with chain three. One, two, three. Remove my hook, insert it in this chain space, pick up the yarn and pull it, and then chain three. One, two, three. And then, oops, looks like I lost a stitch marker, but it's about the halfway point, so I'm going to make my, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to first make my single crochet right here, so that completes the corner and then chain four, sorry, chain two, and then pick up this first chain four space, or insert my hook there, and then bring the loop through, and chain two, and this is where I've lost my stitch marker, but I'm going to just find that halfway mark, so it's about here, so I'm going to insert my hook here, make a single crochet, chain four so sorry chain two again it's a total of chain four but I'm going to do two and then two after I uh, interweave this so I'm going to insert my hook there I could even actually this is easier so I just turn my project and this is the next space so I'm going to pull that loop from there chain two and single crochet here Then chain two. Looks like I lost another stitch marker. Well, it's best to close them, but for this video, I decided not to. It takes much longer to open them. Uh, but here, so it doesn't matter too much uh, because, as I said, it's not supposed to be an exact spot where you insert your hooks. This number of stitches does not have to be fixed, so it just Make an estimation and work your stitches as needed. Chain two and then chain two and find that corner. And chain three. Now again, at this point, there are three. So there's this corner, there's this corner, and this this corner. So I'm going to find the diagonally opposite one, that's this one, and I'm going to pull it through that, and then chain three, one, two, three. So that's the reason we need these extra long chains for the corners, so that we can join this corner this way because we need that extra length to be able to make our corners to give that extra space for these to hold together over here so that's how it looks and now i'm going to chain two and for this square i also have this side to join so chain two and then find that first chain four space and pull the loop chain two so this is where I lost my stitch marker. So this is about the halfway point between the star stitch marker and the corner. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a single crochet there. And then chain two. And then find this. Pull the loop, chain two. And make a single crochet here chain two, find the next one, which is this one, pull the yarn, chain two, and make a single crochet, and I lost another stitch marker, but that's okay. I'll chain two, and this one, this is the last one here. Chain two and the corner. 
and at the corner again I have to join with the corner of the stitch uh, the square so chain three insert my hook in this corner chain pull through and then chain three single crochet in the same chain space uh, sorry same corner and then I've got this one edge left with and here I'm at the end and this was my first single crochet so I'm going to join with a slip stitch and at this point I'm going to cut the yarn and weave in my ends this is how it's looking after joining these two these four squares and if you wanted to join more squares you could just keep adding them where you need them and it's fairly straightforward to do it's uh, basically a set of chains and single crochets the only part that's a little uh, time consuming is to uh, to interweave these but it creates a very nice lacy join and I really like how this looks uh, now uh, that is all for how to join your squares using the flat braid method uh, this is a join as you go technique so you could have your squares pre-made or you could join your squares as you're making them and uh, I use this technique in my Anch blanket which is the Tunisian sampler blanket but you can use this with any uh, any kind of squares they could be the same uh, squares with the same number of edge stitches or not and um, I'm going to make a separate tutorial to show you how to make the border that I've used in my blanket but um, that's all for this tutorial if you liked this video and if you'd like to see more from me please like and subscribe and um, there i have a bunch of other tutorials on my uh, channel you which you're welcome to check out if you would like to know how to make the sampler blanket uh, and the instructions are up on my blog and i will leave a link to them in the description below thank you for watching Bye bye